Hey guys, so today we have my Pan Those Eyeshadows update for the month of April. This is one of my favorite videos to film every month. And if you're unfamiliar, this is an eyeshadow focused project pan as the name would suggest. And it was inspired by Alexi here on YouTube. I will leave her channel and her Pan Those Eyeshadows playlist linked down below. But essentially I have five randomized eyeshadows that I focus on throughout the month. And then once I either hit pan on a shadow or I use it 20 times, I have the option to roll it out and roll a new shadow in. So let's go ahead and get on into my update. I'll leave last month's update and all the previous updates linked down below if you want to catch up on those. So this was my quintet for the month of March. We have Volatile from the ABH Norvina palette, Rustler from the Urban Decay Naked Wild West palette, Mercury from ABH Subculture, Silk, which is a single shadow from Natasha Denona, and La Playa, which is a single shadow from ColourPop. These bottom three were all rolled in last update, and then these first two have actually been in the project since the intro all the way back in January. So I will go ahead and tell you I don't have any new pans this month on any of these five shadows, but I have decided to go ahead and roll out Rustler from the Urban Decay Naked Wild West palette because I have used this shade a total of 35 times so far in this project, and I do give myself the option to roll out any shadow once I've used it 20 times or more. I had already exceeded that 20 use mark last time with Rustler, but I just wasn't quite ready to roll it out yet. I wanted to see just how much more progress I can make on it. So first let me go ahead and share updates on all five of these shadows, show you the progress that I've made on them, some looks that I created with them, and then we will go ahead and roll in a new shadow to replace Rustler. And then I'm also gonna do a quick look with our new quintet. So one of the shadows that's been in this project since the very beginning, and this palette is actually kind of my pan that palette this year. So I am hopefully gonna hit pan on all 14 shades in here. Um, the shade I've been working on since January is Volatile, and I still have no pan in there, but I do have a pretty strong dip going, and I've been using it a ton. It's just that I don't use a whole lot of this shade at a time because it is quite pigmented. I often use that as a crease color or like an outer corner shade. Sometimes I'll also use it as like a smoky liner, but I don't tend to use very dense brushes with this. It's usually the kind of brush that I'll use like a fluffy crease brush in, so Naturally, it's just gonna take me a while to hit pan on this shade, but so far in this project I've used this 44 times. I don't know how many more uses it'll take to hit pan on it, but I really have been using it most days, honestly, because pretty much no matter what type of eye look I'm doing, I can usually incorporate this shade in some way, whether it's to deepen up the outer corner, or sometimes I'll mix it with like a matte cream color to make like a lighter transition shade. Or if, if nothing else, I'll often just use it as a liner. So lots of different ways that I've been using it, and I'm predicting I should probably have pan in this by, if not next update, then the update after that, maybe another two months. But the good news is, in the meantime, I have actually hit pan on a couple of new shades in this palette just by having it out and using it so much. I've been dipping into other shades as well. And this past month I hit pan on both Wild Child and the most recent one that I hit pan on is Rose Gold. I have just a tiny pan in Rose Gold, you can see. Um, I'm thinking pretty soon I will probably also hit pan on Celestial, but yeah, I, it's nice to have pan in almost all of the shimmers. I know, I know this one looks weird. The uh, this is pretty common with ABH shimmers. The metal itself, something to do with the way the metal reacts with the shadow formula. It's kind of corroded there. It almost looks like rust. Um, a lot of people have, seem to have had this problem with some of the pans and the shimmers. I don't seem to have that in any of the other shimmer pans yet, but in Dreamer, the pan's looking kind of weird. So most people seem to continue using them with no problem. So I think I'm gonna keep using it unless I start to experience problems with it or irritation or anything. But anyway, so excited to have two new pans in this palette. I'm on a roll. Now, obviously that leaves us with the more challenging shades to hit pan on, but we still have more than half the year to hit pan on these. So yeah, not sure how much longer that's gonna take, but I, I am enjoying having this palette in the rotation anyway. So then we had the shade Rustler, like I said, from Naked Wild West, and this one I am planning on rolling out. This has also been in the project since January, and they're really, I had probably only used this shade like a couple of times before rolling it into this pan those eyeshadows. So, and I do think that Urban Decay's shadows in their Naked palettes are, uh, generally known to be pretty hard to hit pan on. I think they that these pans do go pretty deep and they're kind of just hard shadows to begin with. So like the ABH shimmers are very soft so they're definitely a lot easier to hit pan on than these. So you can see I have quite a bit of wear in this shade. I've used it a lot and I'm happy to have a little bit of a dip in there but I also just feel like I'm ready to move on to something else. 
I think it would take me the majority of the year to actually hit pan on this shade, even at this rate, and I've been using it a lot. I've really enjoyed using this palette. I also have dips going in some of the other shades now, just after having it out on my vanity for so long. I also have a pretty big dip going on in Standoff and Cowboy Rick, the silver, so I'm happy to have gotten some good use out of this palette um, over the past three months. And I've really grown to like it a lot more than I did before. So a lot of times the way that I use this shade was just as a lower liner, as a nice kind of slightly shimmery brown. It goes with, again, goes with a lot of looks. But there were also quite a few times that I wore that all over the lid. And this past month, I did a lot of kind of coppery green looks, just because that's the color story that we had. There's one look where I put Rustler all over the lid, and then I topped it with a little bit of Natasha Denona Silk, that lighter bronze color. And then I had La Playa from ColourPop, the mint green in the inner corner, and I kind of brought that up um, kind of into the inner crease as well. So those other three shades were all ones that I rolled in in my last update, and they're all going to be staying in for at least another month. So the first one was Mercury from the ABH Subculture palette. That is this grayish taupe here. It is similar to Volatile, as you can see, but it is a little bit deeper and a little bit more gray. So this shade I actually used 13 times this month, and if you've ever tried the subculture palette, you know that these mattes are very, very dusty and soft. So I actually think this will probably be easier to hit pan on even than Volatile because this formula is a little bit different than the one in the Norvina palette. And I already have a noticeable dip happening in this shade, even after just 13 uses. And there really wasn't much of a dip prior to this past month. So a lot of times I would pair this shade with Volatile. I would put Volatile in my crease and then use Mercury to deepen up the outer corner a little bit since it's a little bit deeper. Those two shades do pair really well together. I would also sometimes use this shade as a soft winged liner on the upper lash line. I did a look with Norvina. It was a very kind of like golden look, mainly with like summer on the lid. And then I used Mercury as my winged liner. Also worked really well as a lower liner. So again, not the most exciting shade ever, but it is quite a useful shade, so I'm happy to have some progress on that. I'm not sure if I'll roll this out after the 20 uses, which I probably will hit next month, or if I'll keep it in until I hit pan, but I do feel like I could hit pan on this shade if I wanted to. So next, the shade that I actually used the fewest times this month was Silk from Natasha Denona. That's this single shadow here. This is, I think this comes from their bronze palette, this shade, but I got this as like a Sephora point perk a while ago. Um, this is a really nice formula, very foiled and sparkly, kind of does remind me of the shimmers in like the Norvina palette, and I really enjoyed this. I mainly used this as a lid shade, um, and a lot of times I would use this and then pop La Playa on the inner corner. Really grew to like that copper and green pairing, I think it's really fun, and it's not really a pairing that I had played with a whole lot before this month, but that shade I used six times. And then finally we have La Playa from ColourPop, which is the single shadow. I think this is discontinued. I don't think you can get this anymore. But this shade, I do have a good dip going in here, and I do think I wanna hit pan on this. This I used nine times this month, and it is kind of a sheer shade. You can see it's, you know, it doesn't pack a tremendous punch. And it, well, I mean, it also is just very pastel, so it's kind of blending into my skin tone a little bit here in the swatch, but I am able to get this to really pop as you can see in some of these looks. I just have to put a few layers of it on to really get it to show up at its full intensity. So I think that's why I was able to get uh, some good progress on it this month. And I do think that I could hit pan on this within the next maybe two to three months. So I do plan to keep this in until I hit pan on it. I think it's a really fun color. And like I said, I've just been having fun with the mint green. So that was my little quintet from the last month. I had a lot of fun with it, but I'm ready to switch things up a little bit and roll out Rustler. We've had a lot of fun with Rustler, but I'm really hoping to roll in something that is not brown. <laughs> all right, so I've got my spreadsheet here, my list of all my eyeshadows, and I have taken out any shadows that I've either hit pan on or that I have already rolled out of this project, so we won't get any repeats. And then I did add in the six new shadow shades that are new to my collection, the Flower Beauty Desert Lights palette. So this list goes all the way down to row number 273. I am going to pull up my pretty random app, and we're actually gonna be drawing from two to 273, because I do have a header row. I'm nervous, <laughs> let's see what we get. All right, we got 139. What is that? So good news is it's from the Elf Earth and Ocean palette. Not so good news is that it is a matte black. That is the shade Trenches here. 
So, okay. So I haven't set any specific rules about like vetoing shades, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and set a rule now. <laughs> I've already had a matte black in this project once. It was the matte black from the Shared Planet Polar Bear palette. And I did use that the full 20 times. I got a lot of uses out of it, but I was not about to try and hit pan on that shade. This shade is also very far from having any pan in it. So I am going to say no to that. I don't think any of you guys want to watch me try and hit pan on that shade either. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and pick a new shade. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and do this now because this, I, I, this is meant to be a fun project. I don't, I don't want to force myself to pan something that I don't want to. So, oh, we got 140 now, <laughs> which is also from Elf, Earth, and Ocean. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I, I actually was happy to see this palette because I do love this palette, especially for the springtime. 140 is the shade Underwater, which is this gorgeous turquoise color. Okay, I can work with that. I can not I can definitely work with that, and I think that'll go really well with this kind of green theme we have going on. Okay, so here is our beautiful new quintet. This like deep, mysterious turquoise is so pretty. Here's our old quintet. Here is our new quintet. Nice. Excited about the greens. All right, so as I always like to do in these videos, now I'm gonna create a quick look using our new quintet. Very excited to see what these shades can do together. So I feel like there's a lot of different directions I could go with these colors, but I'm gonna go ahead and start by applying some of Volatile to my crease. And I have already applied eyelid primer. And then, as I often have been doing over the past month, I'm gonna take some of Mercury and apply that to my outer corner and then work that up to deepen up the crease a little bit as well. You can see how that shade does give a lot more depth than Volatile, so they make a good pair. I feel like every time I use this shade, I get more and more of a dip because <laughs> it is just so soft and powdery. Just kind of bringing whatever's left on that brush down to my lower lash line. All right, so next I'm gonna take our new shade Underwater from Elf, Earth, and Ocean. Such a beautiful deep turquoise. And I'm gonna just pat that onto my lid with my finger, kind of onto the center of the lid, and I'm gonna overlap that a little bit with Mercury as well. I think this will also make a beautiful liner this month. Might even try it like all over the lid one day, just for fun, for like a really smoky deep look. I am going to kind of blend that edge there with this shader brush. This is the BK Beauty 203. Then I'm going in with La Playa from ColourPop, the mint green, and this is going to be our like inner third of the lid shade with that shader brush. Yeah, I really wanted to see what those two shades look like side by side. I think they make a really pretty little combo. Then I'm going to take a very small pencil brush. This is the Sigma E30, that same shade, and I'm going to use that to really target it around my inner corner. Taking that fluffy brush, blending out the whole edge there. Just so that this black shade doesn't feel left out because I did decide not to include it in the <laughs> band those eyeshadows, I am gonna use it as a liner today. A winged liner. Just a angled brush from Profusion here. Take a little bit of that onto the lower lash line as well, just whatever's left over on my brush. For this bronze shade, the Natasha Denona Silk shade, I am just gonna pop that on my lower lash line. Really wanted this to primarily be a green look, but I'm just gonna take a little bit of that right here in this kind of inner portion of my lower lash line. And overlapping it a little bit with those deeper shades too. I'm also going to tight line with my Project Pan Eyeliner, this is the Marc Jacobs Highliner in black. All right, so for the lips, I went a very pink nude route, so I applied the Koki Lip Liner in nude, and then I went in with the CoverGirl Lipstick in Honey Bloom, mainly in the center of my lips, and then I topped everything with the e.l.f. Lip Plumping Gloss in Pink Cosmo. So that is the finished look to kick off our month with these five shadows. I'm so excited to keep playing around with these colors this month, and especially for these greens. So let me know, out of these five shades, do you think I'll be able to hit pan on any of them this month? I'm thinking there's a chance, a small chance I could hit pan on Volatile, or maybe La Playa if I really put my mind to it. We'll see. So. Wish me luck. I hope you guys enjoyed this Pan Those Eyeshadows update. If you did, be sure to subscribe because I have my 
regular project pan update coming next. So I hope to see you all there. And otherwise, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you.